Hello and welcome to this uh, second lockdown drum lesson. Um, I would like to talk to you today about groove and funk and playing beats. Um, I, uh, after doing the first of these uh, little videos, I thought most people are probably stuck in the house with just a practice pad of some sticks. And so we're, you know, trying to sort our hands out. You know, this is what I'm doing at the moment, doing a lot of pad work. Um, as we're stuck here with nothing else to do. So um, I thought I'd do a video about um, groove and uh, how you can practice groove stuff on the pad. Um, I always say to my students that you should um, practice every fill like it's a groove and practice every groove like it's a fill. And we're really gonna be taking that concept of practicing a, um, a groove like it's a fill. And we're really gonna be looking at that in this video. But um, the, when I practice, the first thing I do always is play some groove. And when I play the groove, I try and um, play on the beat. I try and play in front of the beat. I try and play behind the beat. I try and swing the beat and play straight 16th notes. I try and shift stuff relative to the beat around. And I try and pulse the time so that I can um, move in, uh, in. I can start in time, go out of time and come back into time. Um, I did that this morning. This is the raw video that you're about to see me playing. Um, and uh, that's what I do every day when I start practicing. Um, if you want to know how long to practice for, if you watch this video, you will see the best amount of time is to keep playing until you drop the stick. So um, here it is, here a little video from me this morning playing some funky grooves. Here it is.
Okay, I hope you like that. Right, so how can we practice um, funky stuff on the pad? Well, um, time and groove for me fundamentally is, is still based around basic technique. And basic technique for me is um, um, hand technique. Hand technique is, is um, basically molar technique and um, Gladstone technique. Molar technique we think of as an arm technique or wrist technique and Gladstone technique we can think of as a finger technique. Um, and I tend to think technically in those two ways with molar technique being the fundamental technique that I use. If um, you're a bit confused about these things, I will try and explain it a little bit today, but it's worth going and do some research. Or if you want, book in for a lesson, and I will explain to you all about Moller Technique and Glaston Technique. Anyway, what is Moller Technique? Moller Technique is an arm technique. It's basically um, using your wrist and your arm to create the beat. It's, it's really structured out of three um, basic um, strokes. Um, the first one being what I call a wrist, um, stroke. A lot of people call it a free stroke or rebound and that's basically hitting from your wrist. A lot of drummers are playing from their arm all the time and this is a big thing that's going to make your groove sound absolutely awful and um, if you're playing from the wrist over here you're going to start to getting all that stick clicking together and then that will alter your technique and you'll find that you'll be doing this and then doing that and that is the real um, source for a lot of drummers of where their bag technique starts is playing from the arm and then bringing their right hand over the left. So it's a really good thing to start to work from your wrist. So if you want to improve your groove playing, that's the first thing you should do here, like this, really simple. Full strokes all the way up to the top, working from your wrist, you know, trying to feel the rebound of the pan and pull the stick up, You're right? Same thing with your left. So I tend to work in um, groups of 16 to start off with. Um, and I count them in groups of four, so four sixteen. So one, two, what? Well, sorry, one, two, three, four. Then one, two, three, four. Then one. And as I get you, that sort of gets comfortable. I move to eight. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. and then fours. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. My very first exercise I always do, I always do with my students when we warm my hands up. Really trying to get the wrist to work. Um, Mola Technique has two other strokes. It has um, um, a molar whip. A lot of people associate this most with um, Mola Technique. And the molar whip is basically rather than, it's a way of creating an accent on the drums and rather than just hitting harder, so rather than going like that, rather than doing that, what you do is you um, force speed into the stick by basically using a whipping mechanism, very similar to if you were cracking the whip, bang, like that. And this mechanism, if I put my arm out, can I get it onto the video, which way have I got to go, that way, that way, that way. So it's a bit like that going down, like, like um, a bit like when you get a hose pipe or a rope and you put that little bump and it runs all the way down. So it starts here and it comes up like this. So this is your whipping action. Um, I don't want to get into this too much I'm, and it, um, because it's a, it's a whole study in itself. But once we start to get a whipping action, we'll notice that the starting point of a whip is with our stick on the pad. So it starts here pretty low and it should end up back here. So it's coming back like that. That's one another big mistake that drummers make is they go and keep it down there. The whip comes back up. Okay. Um, if we're doing a wrist stroke, the 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 um, uh, starting and stopping bit is pointing upwards. So we've got an anomaly here because our whip starts here, and so we have another stroke which is a joining stroke, which I call a pull out. And a pull out basically starts right down here. It's a little tap here, and then you go into a whip. So a, a pull out can follow a whip. So if I do whip, 
and then uh, there's my pull out down there, whip, and as you can see the pull out is almost like, well it is, it's not almost like, it is a hit as we prepare for a whip. So this is your second exercise, if you want to get good at grooves, what's this got to do with grooves? Everything. So I'm whipping and then I'm pulling. Now that there, once you work that up, that is your hi-hat in a rock beat. And we're going to do one, two, three, four, we're going to count like that, and we're going to whip down with our left hand on two and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right, so we approach, we're looking at our rock beats as really in, in rudimental terms. This is a rudiment for me, it should be the most basic rudiment in all the books. Um, right, right, unison, right, it should be a rudiment. Right, right, unison, but with those accents in. You can do it the other way around as well. I'm doing hand to hand. Just as though I was practicing any rudiment. Brilliant. Um, if we go back to the molar technique now and we do a whip. Then, once the stick's up here, we do a full stroke or rebound or wrist stroke, back up like that, and then a pull out, we get this. So I'm whipping every three, before I was whipping every two, now I'm whipping every three. And again, we can put that into a beat and we get like a slow blues. Again, that's something you can practice on the pad. We can take out that um, rebound that's in between. So rather than doing the three like this, we can go ba da ba ba da da da. So I've taken out the middle one. And you see I'm practicing that, really exaggerating it. And then we can play that as a beat. And we now have our swing. Um, we can now put two um, full strokes or rebounds or wrist strokes in between and we get accent every four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we get this now. One, two, three, four. And we get like a sixteenth note funk. I always say this that the feels in music, right, um, really come from your hi hat hand. Um, the, when you're practicing a groove, and this is really important, that the most important thing is the backbeat. And again, that's molar technique. So you practice, if you practice molar technique, because the um, movement is circular, if you get it right, that's that you've got a little metronome actually in your hand. It's very hard to go out of time with something that's circular. You see? It just will stay in time. So if you practice the whip, twos, threes, this is all the left hand now, fours, right, that circular motion is going to keep you in time. So we've got a rock beat here. And this is the exercise I think is really important on a pad, if you can get it, it's pretty hard. You put a metronome on, right? And uh, let's back up, we'll put a metronome and then we'll just start with whips in both hands. So you're going to go whip, 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 whip. There we go. Just bowl of whips. And then twos with the right hand. Now, one of the things we want to do to improve our grooves is make sure our left hand doesn't shift. And one way to stress it out is by um, changing gear. So I'm going to change gear from eighth notes in my right hand 
to threes, to triplets, and we're going to get that slow blues beat. So I'm going to make that transition now. Trying to keep the left hand in the same place. Back to twos. This is a really great exercise for improving your groove. Two, three. And we go to fours now, 16th notes. You can keep going fives. Or six. Which I'm now playing with two threes. So this is a really great exercise. first exercise I suggest you do on your pad um, to try and improve your groove. Um, another really important thing for grooving and feel and playing beats is really understanding the 16th note series. So what the 16th note series is, is if you have a crotchet, one, two, three, four, inside there is four 16th notes, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E, three E and a four E and a. And we can use that in all sorts of ways um, to practice our um, uh, beats. So one way I often use is to, um, is to get the uh, bass drum and snare drum playing a basic beat. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a. And then shuffle through with our right hand through the 16th note series. So we put, there's a one E and a one E and a. There's a hi hat on the one and the two. One E and a two E and a one. And oh, let's try, let's try to talk and play at the same time. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one E and a two E. Then we move the hi hat to the E. One E. I'm finding that quite hard this morning. <laughs> to one e and two e and a one e and a two e and a. Then move it to the end. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. And then do that. So let's speed that up a bit. So we got one, two, one, two. And then we can take two. One on one E, two E, one E, two E. Moving two through, then three. So I'm going to do three would be one E, one E and, and then E and A, and then one and da and then one e da so there's a whole series of them so we have one two one two so i'm going through this really quickly that's another world you can study is you is, is moving your right hand through um the the uh, 16th note series and then you can move to triplets, go through all the different variations of a triplet. But there's one exercise I'm just going to leave you with now, which I found really useful in, in developing grooves. And it goes like this. We're going to take a rock beat straight with the bass drum on one, um, on, and um, the uh, uh, snare drum two. Right, we're going to play two to the right hand. And then we're going to move through the 16th note series with our left hand, playing grace notes. The only time we're not going to do that is where the 16th note series happens to land on the back beat on beat 2. We're going to not worry about that. But the rest of them are going to fill in. So obviously we're going to start with the 1 of um, beat 1. 
with the grace note on that would be like this. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. So I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm playing a very light grace note on one. And once you're comfortable with that, we're going to move it over to the E. One E, one E, one E, one E. Just do these till they feel comfortable. I cannot talk and do this stuff at the same time. I've got to get better at that. So I'm going to move to the and. One and two. 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 And now to the the da, which will sound like one e and a two. One e and a two. One e and a two. One e and. As soon as you get here. You see that there? That's hard. It's, it's hard to do this. And you have to go back to the molar technique. This is a pull out. What are those little touches? Followed by a whip. And this is my overall point of this video is if you want to get good at, at groove, you've got to go back to hand technique. Anyway, let's get back into that. So one. Now I'm not going to put it onto beat two because I've always got my back beat. So now we're going to move to the E of beat two to get one. And. And then down. And then we're going to put two in. One E. One E. One E, one E and, one E and, one E and, one E and. You can see I'm missing out some of the ones that um, where they're on the actual backbeat. We could do a three. Oh, not nice. And that last one is fours. It's every single sixteenth though. Paradiddles. That's a groove. Beautiful. Great. Now we're going to do inverted paradiddles as a groove. Now we're going to play the first half of a paradiddle followed by the second path of an inverted paradiddle. Right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, as a groove. That's beautiful, so funky. Double paradiddle. The groove. You're rethinking how you're playing your rudiments now. You're thinking them as grooves. Once we get to rudiments, and I'd love to do a mass on rudiments, but I'm just touching on it, giving you a few ideas. It, um, what you could try is something really, really simple like two double paradiddles and then a paradiddle. I work that as a rudiment, so we're going to go. Paradiddle, paradiddle, paradiddle. 
paradiddle, sorry, I'll do that again. Double paradiddle, double paradiddle, double paradiddle, double paradiddle, 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 double paradiddle, double paradiddle, double paradiddle, double paradiddle, paradiddle, paradiddle. So we do that worky thing on the pad and getting it all fast. But then we play it as a groove. Here's our beat. Three, four. Try and get faster and faster. I try and play louder and quieter. All right. I hope that's given you some ideas. I've tried to cram in so much stuff into uh, one little video. Um, I'm going to try and do more and more of these. If there's anything in here you're interested or confused by, uh, just give me an email and we could do a Skype lesson. I've really got into Skype lessons now, so give us a shout. We could do some Skype lessons. It's really easy. Um, you can book in just have 15 minutes. You don't have to spend like loads of money on a whole lesson. So um, give me a shout if you want to know more about that. Um, I've got a little bit more video from my uh, practice session this morning. Um, I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you're all happy, you know, stuck in the house without being able to go out. Um, and I hope um, you're using that time to do lots and lots of drum practice. And I hope to see you soon on the next video. Thank you very much.